Good morning. Welcome to worship with us here at La Crescenta Presbyterian Church. And a special welcome if you're joining us for the first time. We hope your spirit will be lifted, drawing closer to God this hour as we sing his praise, listen to the reading of his word, and receive instruction in the paths of righteousness. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious, loving God, we bow before you, seeking your grace this morning. Be with each of us as we worship you this hour. Let's begin our time together by singing God's praise. Oh, 
Welcome to worship. We're so glad to have you with us. Right now, Children's Ministries is hosting a food drive for Children's Hunger Fund. Project Food Pack provides meal boxes for children experiencing poverty right here in the United States. Check the Connection Center, the weekly email, or the lcpc.net events page for shopping lists. Please only bring items from the shopping list, and the deadline for donations is November 12th. We hope you'll join us today at 3 p.m. as Pastor Morris will be formally installed as LCPC's senior pastor and head of staff. The service of installation will be conducted in our sanctuary by representatives of the Presbytery of San Fernando. We'll have a reception afterwards in Koopman's Hall and everyone is invited. Come celebrate God's faithfulness as LCPC embarks on this chapter of its life and ministry. We invite you to spend the next weeks prayerfully discerning God's calling in your life as we all get ready to fill out our faith promise cards for the 2024 stewardship campaign. Knowing that God generously gives to us, we can bless others with what we have received by giving a portion back to God. Each of us will be making an intentional promise to God based on our faith that he will provide what's needed for us to fulfill our promises in 2024. Faith promise cards were mailed out a few days ago. If you don't receive a card in the mail, you may pick one up in the church office, the pew pockets, or the connection center in the narthex. The faith promise cards will be collected on Vision Sunday, November 19, during our worship service. LCPC has been busier than ever, and the communications team would love to know more about how you're kept informed about all that's going on in the life of the church. We invite you to take a short survey about the information you'd like to receive and the best ways to get it to you. The survey can be found at lcpc.net slash survey. Printed copies are available in the Narthex and church office. We value your input. If you're new or visiting us today and would like to find out more about all we have going on, please fill out one of the white get in touch cards that can be found in the pew racks or chapel and drop it off at our connection center right outside of the sanctuary. You can also sign up to receive our weekly email by clicking the link on the bottom of our homepage at lcpc.net. And that's it for this week.
Let us pray. Lord, you are gracious, holy, merciful, loving. It is an honor to worship you on this very Sunday. I pray for this be a moment of our hearts to show gratitude for what you have done, what you are doing now, what you will do. Or let us be a moment to us to confess the things that are festering in our hearts as well. I pray for every individual here watching this. Let Pastor Morris's words illuminate through the Holy Spirit. Let our hearts be convicted. Let us move closer towards Jesus. We give you praise, honor, and glory for who you are in your holy name. Amen. Church, let us continue worship this morning as we read uh, from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. John 14, 1 to 7. These are the words of Jesus to his disciples just a uh, few days before his crucifixion. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going? Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Church, let us uh, pray for the proclamation of the gospel. O oh Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. Lord, that the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Speak to us, Lord, through the proclamation of the good news this morning. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. I heard about this lady that died and she was at the heaven's pearly gates. And at the gate, she meets an angel who told, who told her, you cannot come in and yet. You have to correctly spell a word. What word? She said, the angel said, any word. So she spelled the word love. L-O-V-E. He said, welcome to heaven. Then the angel asked her if she would take his place for just a moment, and he instructed her to follow the same procedure if anyone shows up. So a few minutes later, she sees her ex-husband walking up. <laughs> she just couldn't believe it. What are you doing here? She asked, he said, well, apparently, I just had a heart attack. Did I really make it to heaven? She said, no, 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 not yet. You have to spell a word correctly. And he said, what word? Then there was a long pause. And then she said, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Czechoslovakia, if you spell the word Czechoslovakia, you will get in. Thankfully, when you and I get to the pearly gate, we didn't have to pass that spelling test. We didn't have to pass that spelling test because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Our admission to heaven, our admission to the Father's house is guaranteed by the finished work of Christ on the cross. No, nothing else is needed. Nothing else is needed. 
These past few Sundays, we had the chance to reflect on some of the most powerful, some of the most profound statements made by Jesus in the Gospel of John. This series of messages, the seven I am statements of Jesus, meant to introduce to us the Jesus of the Bible. In other words, instead of allowing our culture or our feeble minds to define Jesus to us in this series of messages, we are fully leaning on the written words to witness to the incarnate word. That is very much what was in my mind when I decided to teach the seven I am statements of Christ in the Gospel of John. I wanted to allow the written word, the Bible, to introduce to the church today and the 21st century American culture to introduce to us the incarnate word, to, to introduce Christ to us. Today's I am statement is a profound yet a controversial one. This is what Jesus says in John 14, 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is probably the most exclusive statement ever made by anyone. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, in our pluralistic society, in our relativistic age, it sounds so intolerant, uh, sometimes even arrogant or narrow-minded, and in, in most cases very offensive to say Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life found in him. Well, if only Jesus had said, I am one way, we would have an easier job in the world. If only Jesus had said, I am one truth, it would have been much more easier for us if Jesus had said, I am a way to life eternal. The people could accept it. But Jesus boldly declared that he is the way, the truth, and the life. At the heart of the early church's proclamation of the gospel, as the heart of the early church's preaching was pretty much the same message. If you look in the book of Acts and you see the witness of the early church, you see that the early church, one example is Acts 4.12, where Peter and John stood before the council in Jerusalem, boldly declaring that salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mortals by which we must be saved. Wow. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mortals by which we must be saved. That was pre pretty much the proclamation of the gospel according to the early church. Well, the early church never compromised the message. And I'm sure they were faced with the same challenges that you and I are faced with today. Well, I tell you the truth, no other place was more pluralistic in the face of the earth more than the Roman Empire. <laughs> they had literally hundreds of gods. They had hundreds of gods to worship. No place was more pluralistic than the Roman Empire, and no culture was more pluralistic than the Greek or Roman culture. And yet the church never watered down its witness here is John and Peter in Acts chapter 4. Salvation is found in no one else, period. So the sixth I am statement is actually a challenging one. But I'm going to share a couple things with us this morning. It's actually a trifold statement. So I'm going to start by this, this three things that Jesus described himself with in, in this statement. Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. And I will wrap up with how comforting this actually, this statement is. It is not meant to drive people away. It is actually meant to bring people the right way, to bring them to the right track. That's what Jesus meant in, in this statement. So Jesus first, Jesus is a way. Well, he is a way to a fulfilled and satisfied life. He is the way to an eternal life, our eternal life. 
He is the way of salvation. If you look back, you'll see that God guided the people of Israel in their wilderness journey to the promised land. But we have to remember that those who did not believe that God is able to take them and to lead them in the way to the promised land to Canaan were all perished in the desert. None of the people who doubted that God is able to lead them in the way literally made it to the promised land. That generation, the whole generation was perished. God said, well, this is a way. But they said, no, we chose rather not to follow in this way, and they were all perished. You probably heard the joke, why do so few people get to heaven? And the answer is, they never stop to ask for directions. They never stop to ask for directions. That's it. And in this statement, Jesus actually gives us directions to heaven. And that is very true. And I'm glad that Thomas asked Jesus for direction in John 14. Here, as I said, the disciples are so troubled by the news that Jesus will be leaving them sometime soon. In fact, in John 14, verse 18, the Bible says that they, they felt orphans. They felt, you know, that feeling? They felt orphans. They were so troubled. He was, Christ has, had been with them for three years. He was there pretty much their uh, to-go guy. Uh, whether they have an issue, a trouble, a problem, they would always go to Jesus. Now, what are we going to do? How are we going to manage our lives? And Jesus said, don't worry about it. I will be there. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm more glad that Jesus actually said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Because there is no other way to lead to the Father's house, to lead to our eternal life but Christ. People may think today that there are multiple ways But that passage, that single verse that we read from the book of Proverbs this morning, Proverbs 14, 12, it says that there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. People think that, well, yeah, this may take us from here to there, but at the end, it leads to death. Jesus is a way. He said, this is pretty much it. That's the only way. Jesus is the truth. And the issue, the topic of truth is so important in the Gospel of John. In fact, in John, we find the noun aletheia, or truth, repeated more than 25 times. Aletheia carries with it the idea of that which is authentic, real, as opposed to what is fake, false, and counterfeit. That's what we find in the Gospel of John. Jesus said, well, if you're really looking for something real, not fake, if you're really looking for something authentic, not false, here it is. Here it is. What Jesus was saying in here is, there is basically there is no more middle ground. Truth is truth and lies are lies. Truth is truth and lies are lies. A person may live in the aletheia, in the truth, or in the lies. I don't think that Truth is relative. It is really whether, whether it is true or fake. Although I believe that all religions contain some truth. All religions of the world contain some truth and some morality to them. But Christ is the absolute truth. Every religion, every single religion... Judaism, Islam, whatever that religion is, they have some truth in there. But Christ is absolute truth. Well, my friends, the devil does not mind a little truth in there. And that is the key. The devil does not mind a little truth. In the Garden of Eden, Satan tempted our first parents, Adam and Eve. What he said to them, actually, there was some truth in there. But it was not the whole truth. The devil does not mind the little truth. But Jesus said, it is not about that much truth that you should have. You should have me because he is the absolute truth. Jesus is a way, the only way, the absolute truth, the fulfillment, the complete, the the satisfied life. Jesus says he is a life. 
John's gospel overflows with Jesus being the source of life, both in its physical form and spiritual form. Jesus is the source of our physical life and our spiritual eternal life, the life here on earth as well as eternal life in heaven. In John chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, we read that through him, all things were made. That physical world was made through Christ. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, John says, and the life was the light of all people. He is the life fulfilled, realized, complete. You ever heard the name of Thomas Kempis? He was a 14, early 15th century German priest who wrote a wonderful small book, The Imitation of Christ. And Kempis says, uh, commenting on this passage, on this I am statement, he said, without the way, there is no going. In other words, without Christ, we will get stuck in there. <laughs> If you are trying to find another way, good luck. But without the way, there is no going. You'll get stuck. Without the truth, there is no knowing. And without the life, there is no living. What a beautiful way to put it. Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. And he continues to say, I am the way which you must follow, the truth which you must believe, the life for which you must hope. I am the inviolable way, the infallible truth, the never-ending life. I am the straight way, the sovereign truth, life true, life blessed, life uncreated. If you abide in my way, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, and you shall attain life everlasting. These are the words of of a, a simple priest from the 14th century. Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. We may pretend, we will probably pretend that we have life, but there is no living without Christ. There is no absolute truth without Him, and there is no way to the Father's house without Him. Friends, today's statement is certainly a tough sell in our culture. It has always been a tough sell, actually, in every, almost in every culture. Yet it is not meant, and that's what I really want to make sure that you get it right today, it is not meant to close the door in anyone's face. Because a lot of times when, when, when people say, well, yeah, Christians say, uh, or Christians believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, as if we are closing, closing you know, the door in everyone's face. It is not meant to be, tw- to be this way, but it's meant to direct all of us in the right direction. That is the point here. The point here is to direct those who are seeking to the right direction. If I get lost, or if I'm, if I'm lost, and I stop to ask for direction, I would appreciate the people who say to me, I really don't know, I'm not from the neighborhood or something. And instead of someone who say, okay, you drive a couple blocks and make a lift, you drive three blocks and make a right, and I, am, I end up in the freeway or something. I appreciate if someone says, I don't know. <laughs> So this, this statement, it is not meant to close the door in anyone's face, but it means and it meant to direct us today in the right direction. It is not meant to send anyone to hell, but to direct those who are seeking to the right way, to embrace the, the truth and to receive life. After all, the church is not sending anyone to hell. After all, the church is the agency that proclaims the good news. <laughs> After all, the church is proclaiming the angelion, the gospel, the good news of Christ. The church doesn't send anyone to eternal condemnation. We are sharing with the world that this is the way to do it. This is the truth to embrace. This is the life to receive.
We don't preach John 14, 6, as the world at some time is perceiving. We don't preach John 14, 6 to determine who is on the right way and who missed the truth because we've got our hands full ourselves just trying to follow Jesus down his narrow way. I didn't have time to send anyone to hell. I didn't have time to, to say, oh, yeah, you, I am busy following the way myself. Embracing the truth myself, receiving the fullness of life myself. In other words, our job is to follow the way, embrace the truth, and allow Christ's life to transform our lives, period. Period. That's it. And for me, this is a very refreshing statement. It is very comforting to know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You know why? Because oftentimes, I myself, I am prone to wonder. And I, when I am off the track, there is a way calling me back to himself. This is a comforting statement because... I myself oftentimes, I am prone to bought into lies. <laughs> and here is the truth calling me back to himself. It is a comforting statement because I seek life, life in its fullness. And when I feel that emptiness within me, here is life. Here is Jesus, the life, calling me back to receive life in its fullness. This is meant to be a comfort to the disciples. You, we should never miss the context of John 14, right? Because they were troubled, they were afraid, they were terrified, they were, their world was pretty much upside down. So Jesus spoke that statement in John 14, 6 to give them comfort. And it should be to us and to this fallen world today. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you please join me as we pray for ourselves now? Let us, let us pray for what is one, one lesson that you can take home today. Do you need the way? Do you need to come back to the way? Do you need to embrace the truth in a new, fresh way today? Do you need to receive life in its fullness from the hands of Christ today? Oh God, we thank you for this proclamation this morning. We thank you for this statement this morning that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life Thank you for the way that you have opened to all of us who are seeking to find our way back to you. We thank you for Jesus and for his love and grace. We are grateful, Lord, to share this good news with the world today. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for joining us in worship this morning. We trust this hour has been a blessing to you. As we prepare to take God's light into the world, we'd like to invite you to join our congregation in person Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock in our beautiful sanctuary where our terrific praise band leads the music or in our chapel where we sing the great hymns of the faith led by our choir. If you're feeling disconnected from the church, especially if you aren't able to leave home, please call or email Nancy in the office and we will have one of our deacons reach out to you. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. <laughs>